In this video, we're going to go over the creation of a sheet metal part and the creation of its drawing. Let's begin. I'm going to make it just like any other part. I'm going to say File, New. I'll use my standard template. And I'm going to draw a sketch on the top plane. And I'm just going to draw a rectangle. This is going to become the starting piece of sheet metal for my part. As always, I need to fully define it. So we'll say it's two inches high, three inches wide. And I'll exit. Now we're going to add a base flange. So insert sheet metal and base flange. I'm going to encourage you to use the gauge table. Sheet metal is not sold in fractions of an inch, but rather in gauge. So we'll select our table. The one I most commonly use is the bottom, the standard steel table. And now we can select the gauge from our drop down menu. I'm going to choose the very common 16 gauge. And you can see here we have a default bend radius of 0 0.075 inches. Often you want to have a bend radius that's at least one metal thickness uh, in radius. If you can go two, that's better. This avoids cracking. And I'm going to go with the default K factors. This accounts for the stretching of the material as I bend it. I'll say OK. And I have a piece of sheet metal. Just for visibility, I'm going to turn off my planes and axes now. A view, hide and show. And I'll get rid of the axes and I'll get rid of the planes. I'll even get rid of the origins. There, that's cleaner. I'm going to add some flanges to this piece of metal to create kind of a pan-like structure. So we'll do an edge flange. I'll click on the edge that I want to apply it to. I'll click in the box to do another selection. And notice because I'm creating them together, they uh, will have the same length. If I'd like them to have an all uniform length, I can come down to flange length and just type it in. And I don't care for the direction, so I'll actually flip it. And I'll say OK. Fit my screen, and I have a nice box. Let's save it, and then we'll make a drawing of it. To make our drawing, file, make drawing from part. We'll choose our typical piece part template, and I'll say OK. Our drawings come in, excuse me, our views come in, uh, but they're not very good. So let's clean them up a little bit. I will delete that view. These two aren't bad. I don't care for the isometric there, so I'll get rid of that isometric. Oops. Get rid of my isometric. I accidentally blew away the view that was on top here, so let's reinsert that. I'll say insert drawing view projected, click on the source view, and create my new view. This is important. Remember that in any drawing, 
if you're using the standard glass box rule, meaning it's not a derived view like a detail view, broken view, all the edges should line up. See how the views move together and the views always remain aligned? Okay, that's important. That's something I will gig hard for when grading your papers. The views look good. They're still a little bit large. So I'm going to change the sheet scale to one to one. That's much nicer. Now I have room to put my dimensions in. I'll say OK. And I'm going to insert my isometric again. That's not bad. Always make sure that your hidden lines are turned off in the isometric. So I'll click on it and go under display style and do hidden line removed. And since the isometric is just a viewing aid, I'm going to reduce the scale of it. Say use a custom scale and let's go down a half scale. We'll put it in the corner. Now, page one should be your part just as you want it to come in from a vendor. So that means fully defined. So let's do that. I'm going to smart dimension the outer edges. There's the width. Next we'll do the height. Oops. Delete that view. To the height of our part. And I'll give the metal thickness. I have a visible corner here, so I'll put my bend radius in. And of course, I need a material note. Say notes. And I'm going to use uh, a very common steel AISI 1010. This is a low carbon steel. It's quite soft, but it readily forms and it's very weldable. Oops, we have an extra note, so I'll just click on that. You go away. Let's see if it's actually there. That may be a video artifact, which it is. Okay. The next thing I need to do is fill out my title block. So I'll make sure that drawn by, that should be your name, not mine. Today's date is 10-19-19. The scale should be the scale of the drawings in this view. So that's going to be a one to one scale. And I can double check it down here. Use sheet scale and it has one to one. So I need to change that. One to one. And this will be a sheet one of two. 
Now, my drawing title, my revision, and my part number, those all come from the model properties. So I'm going to come over to my drawing manager. I'm going to expand the view, and I'm going to open my model. I'll go under File, Properties. The part number, let's change the part number to 1001. Revision should be zero. And the description will be pan. There will not be a vendor because I'm going to make this part in my, my company. And I'll say OK. Save it. Close the component, or excuse me, the model. And all of my drawing fields update. Very nice. Okay, so here it is, just the way I want to install it in my final machine, or the way I want to receive it when it comes into my company, if this is a part that I'm having made by an outside vendor. Let's go to sheet two. On sheet two, what I want to see is the flat pattern, fully defined. So insert, excuse me, insert, get out of this, drawing view, model. I'm going to choose my model. Now, make sure that under reference configurations, you choose the flat pattern. And down here, the flat pattern with annotations. I'll bring it in. And you can see here are the bend lines and the bend notes. So we need to fully define this object again. So we'll smart to mention. Again, I always start with overalls. So maximum width, maximum height. I want the machinist to be able to know whether they have a piece of stock large enough to make this object. I'm going to give the distance to the bend lines. Always be careful about double dimensioning. And there we go. So now I have a fully dimensioned flat pattern. Now we need one more page on this. So we're going to come down and we're going to click on Add Sheet. Comes up with this message, Sheet Format could not be located, and that's fine. So if this were a more complicated part and we needed to actually add the format, we could click on Browse. And I had you set up a templates file. Mine is SolidWorks Templates 2019. And I would choose B size sheet 2. And I'll say OK. A third sheet is created and it brings in the format. The format is this border. And notice that the title block picks up all of the uh, title, part number, and revision information. Okay, for sheet metal, however, we don't need this. What I want to see for the third page is simply an empty sheet. So we can delete the entire format just by clicking on the format item 
in the Drawing Manager and pressing Delete. Now we're going to add a view which has the uh, edges only. So we'll say Insert, Drawing View, Model. And we're going to do it in the flat pattern. Say so, okay. Now we have these bend lines and bend notes and all this other good stuff, but we don't want that. We do not want to have our laser cutting machine actually trying to write up 90 degrees into the steel with its laser. So I'm going to click on the on the bend lines. And I'm going to say hide. Now I've got only the edges, so my laser machine won't get confused. I'm going to save my drawing. And now I'm good. So this would be a complete full credit example of how to draw sheet metal. So again, sheet one, this is a fully dimensioned part as you would want it to come into your company. Sheet two, a fully dimensioned flat pattern. Sheet three, an edges only view so I can create a DXF file to drive a laser cutter or plasma cutter and have my part made directly from the model. And that is how you do sheet metal. Thank you very much.